as far as NBA free agency is concerned, uh, what are your thoughts on the general, um, how the aprons are affecting everything, how teams just don't have the money? Like a, a mid-level exception, people think, and shout out to the Grizzlies for being ahead of the curve, you know what I mean, for being stingy with the MLE, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Teams aren't even spending the MLE right now because of these aprons. They're looking more towards signing and trade type situations. It's crazy, man. And, and, and this is something that a lot of people were, were doing some the sky is falling stuff during the season, letting y'all know, hey, it's, it's not going to be like what y'all think. Teams are going to have, have to move smarter, right? And we're definitely yep. seeing it, man. Free agency died. Like Teams are like, I, we don't – you're not even getting this MLE. You, <laughs> and like poor Luke Kennard, man, that man, the Greasers opt out of his contract, and there's really nothing they can do. Like his value – like you might get Luke Kennard right now for $5, 6000000 million a year. Yeah. Which is a 60%. 66% decreased in what he was making at first. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, this, this is wild. But what are your thoughts on all that type of stuff? Oh, yeah. It's, it's definitely handy. It's definitely handicapped the league. Uh, when free agency started, you know, not only free agency start, we already hear about moves that's being made before it yep. even officially start. Then as soon as it officially started, about the MLE boom. moves, bro. The MLE yes. was the team to throw that out. Like, it was nothing to do. Yeah, this year it was like, it was a random like, end of the bench guy got signed first, like 10 minutes after the free agency mm -hmm. officially started. Then the rest of the night, it just blah, blah. Then I, I made a tweet, I think Wednesday or something, when Kyle Anderson signed with Golden State. It was like the biggest signing that day. I was like, bro, when Kyle Anderson is the biggest signing of the day, where is bro, football Golden State is going to be so ass, bro. <laughs> the highlight of them dudes summer was signing two Grizzlies we let go of two years ago. Man. Uh, There's only third uh, team in three years now. But then, Yeah, three years. So yeah, it's it's slim pickings out here. Uh, I saw Gary Trent Jr. wanted eighteen million. Shit, Still out there. Still yeah, out he there. might get might get eighteen million over three years at this point, but not in one year. Oh, uh, four, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, man, it's crazy. You got Boston. Time. Uh, Boston paid everybody. Then put then the owners put the team up for sale. Like, <laughs> they went yeah, man. exactly. <laughs> the folks said we gonna go into the the mega apron, and I'm selling this home. <laughs> the, the Clippers let Paul George go and start signing the, the all criminal team. Like, right. just, let me get some of these dudes on the on the on the jail discount. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it, it, my breeze is like, oh, okay, this this what we doing? Oh, shit, okay, L A L A. They not Japanese. like us, <laughs> right? <laughs> Sacramento, uh, yeah, like, all right, bro. Well, let me get whatever splash we got left. The bottom Rosa, come on, you don't DeMar make me. Let's go get the mid-range king. We need you shooting. I don't need this count. <laughs> but it's wild, bro. Oh, it's, it's funny, wild. Man. And it's I'm, gonna say this, man. I'm not mad at what the Grizzlies are doing because, like I said, teams that aren't in either one of those aprons, they're going to have the, the ball to play with. They can they can move a lot freer, you know what I mean? Especially these teams. Because, man, you know, I think part of that second second apron thing is is that you automatically go to be it, – it automatically puts you at the back of the draft. So the teams that aren't in those mm -hmm. aprons, are all going to be ahead of you regardless of standing. Did you saw that? Uh-uh. Part of that second apron thing, I might be wrong. Kenny, you can check this out. I might be wrong, but a part of it is if, if you're a repeated second apron team, like, you automatically go to the end of the end of the draft in your round. But what, what if a sorry team? It's a repeat. There are some sorry teams. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <That's all laughs> I might be wrong, bro. Hey. I might be totally misinterpreting that joint. But, man, this is the way it read to me. Very possible. What's up, Ken? So, let me read this to you guys. This is wild, the second apron stuff. Yeah, second I, apron shit. Crazy, bro. Mom let me just read it to you. I want to clarify yeah. it because there's – I think I, know, I think I know what you read, but I want to I want to clarify. Hey, it real quick. This, up, is, this is coming from Bobby Marks. All right. All this right. is the uh, range of draft pick penalties if they exceed the second apron. The, number one is they, they have a frozen first round pick. If yep. a team finishes with their salary cap exceeding the second apron, uh, they're in the that's the, if you that's if you if, if you exceeded the second apron. All right. Right. The 190 okay, million for the upcoming okay, go season. Go ahead, go ahead. Their first round pick in the seventh draft following the infringement will be frozen. That means that the pick cannot be traded. All right. So yeah. then to unfreeze the pick, um, you have to, if the team manages to stay below the second apron in at least three of the four subsequent seasons following the one in which the fr infringement occurred, the pick will become unfrozen and can be traded once again. Now, this is what you're talking about. Finally, if the team after exceeding the second apron 
continues to exceed the second apron in two of the four subsequent seasons, their frozen first round pick will move to the end of the first round. This okay. means that it will become the 30th pick apart from the remaining untradeable. Regardless of where you finish it. <laughs> so that's Man, why we see that's why we saw a random trade when like Minnesota traded the 2031 first to move yeah. into the top 10 with San Antonio. And I was yeah. like, Yo, that's, that's why random. that's why what's the name is, is on our roster. That's why Zaire and Jiddy yeah. are still on our roster. Because it took three second round picks to move Tim fucking Hardaway, bro, who can actually yep. play basketball. Imagine what it would take to move freaking Zaire Williams. Teams like, nah, man, this this kid, this cap space is not free, uh, homie. <laughs> For real. <laughs> this is the it's this it. is the Killian Hayes it's effect it. right here. It's like it. this it's is it. why bro, I'm it's not Detroit. It's except for Detroit. Doing. I'm not <laughs> knocking nothing the Grizzlies are doing. You better be smart with your cap space right now. Man, that is why I did not be, know bro. that. That's crazy. And the fact that you got Gigi and Vince on the contracts they own, and then you know that the, the salary cap is going to increase 10% every year. Yeah, yeah, bro. That's yeah. It's that they say that once in a couple of years it's gonna relieve itself again because it's gonna be, you know, that 10% increase is gonna yeah, make so it a little bit more keep room. increasing. Yeah, but you gotta you better be smart, man. You cannot just be the teams out here just signing dudes. Cause you remember last year, like my the Lakers just you know, middle of exception, sign this guy in the space, sign this guy for the taxpayers exception. You know, they had all these guys they were signing. Man, that shit is – and you see it don't work. That shit does not work, bro. That shit does not work. You just making all these signings just to be making signings, you better be – you better have some smart dudes up there. Are you going to be looking dumb?